right, how you guys doing? Uh, today we're back and we're gonna be actually doing a timing belt install on a 4G63 2.0 DSM. Okay, so stay tuned you guys. All right, so we're gonna be working today doing the timing belt install on my buddy George's uh, uh, motor, the six bolt motor. Uh, seven bolt motor should be fairly identical. All right, and one of the things one of the things to be um, uh, just aware about is I installed the Kigley Racing Crank Trigger Kit. Um, it does have a timing mark, which actually is located right here. You can see it right there. Um, it has that small little dot, that small little indentation. The six bolt has has it actually like so. Okay, it has a little slit on the little plate. Okay, just something to be aware of. But it's still the same concept. Okay. Alright, so one thing I did off camera, I ended up uh, installing a new tensioner pulley, also a new, a new idle pulley, and also a, two, uh, a set of cam gears, okay, a set of AEM cam gears for him. Um, yeah, so let's have at it. Alright, so the first thing I like to do, and this, this doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, but this is something I like to do. Um, we're going to be installing a Gates timing belt, you can install an OEM belt. If you can find them, we just decided to go this route because it was much more convenient uh, for George. Anyways, um, what I like to do is I like to put the belt in one direction. You can read read the lettering in one direction. And what I like to do is actually put a zip tie on, on the exhaust cam gear first. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do that and just zip, zip it up. So it won't look so it won't move in that place okay all right so now that we have a zip tie here on this cam gear we're gonna actually put this to time um for this instance i only need to move the, the exhaust cam gear and just line this up with the teeth make sure the timing belt sits properly they're still lined up and now i'm just gonna hold it in place with the finger uh, with my finger and then put a zip tie around it okay let me go ahead and do that might have needed a bigger zip tie but that's fine this should still work i hope <laughs> all right it's zipped on there so that's fine uh, we'll leave it on there and then uh, we'll go to the next step so this step is actually not necessary for the guys that remove the balance shafts but i like to do it as a precautionary measure just to line everything and keep everything you know in sync so what we're going to do we're going to put the timing mark here for the oil pump okay and we're going to bring the belt around make sure it's sitting sitting on the, on the pump sprocket here okay and now you got to make sure you have your timing mark um, here as well for the crank like I mentioned you'll have a different if you if you're running the stock the stock plate the stock plate here at the back it's actually gonna look like this it's gonna have this little slit you just want to make sure you line this slit back with this area here in this little arrow on the pump that's where you want it okay so let's go ahead and put the belt in here. Hug it around the sprocket by putting just a little bit of tension on it, not a whole lot. And then what you want to do is bring it back out here. And then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Make sure your timing marks here are set. Make sure the oil pump here is set. Um, and you definitely want to make sure this is set in the correct in the correct um, orientation because you can have it and being off um, if you have balance shafts okay you just want to make sure it's in the right area okay one thing I noticed if you do have balance shafts put it right here right in the center facing up 90 degrees and let the sprocket go if it comes back you're actually in the right area if it doesn't if it actually rotates Clockwise, you actually have to rotate it one, one, uh, one turn, and uh, see see if maybe that will correct correct your issue. Okay. 
right, before you guys do anything else, you want to make sure, you know, you tighten up the tensioner pulley. I already did that and um, make sure nothing's in the way. And now what we're going to do is actually we're going to cut off the little zip ties that we put together here. Okay, we're going to cut, cut those, snip them off. Once you guys are done doing, doing that, what you want to do is you're going to actually want to pull this pin out from the tensioner. You're going to want to pull it out so it can apply more tension. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, and if you're reusing the tensioner, the same hydraulic tensioner, you might want to compress it with the bench vise or maybe even a C-clamp. But uh, you got to do it very slowly. Okay. Just got to keep that in mind. All right. So once you have all that stuff done, what you want to do is rotate the crank and you're going to want to rotate it about six times, six full turns. And the reason why you want to do six full turns is because this oil pump sprocket will not line up unless you do the six full turns. Okay. So you're going to want to do that and you want to make sure all your timing marks are still in the same spot once you turn it over six times. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so I just finished up turning the motor six times based based on uh, what uh, the, the crank trigger will. So I rotated six times and uh, everything lined up. As you can see, we got the oil pump sprocket, we got the crank lining up, and we also have the cam gears lining up as well. Okay, so that's one way you guys can do a uh, six bolt DSM, um, even seven bolt DSM uh, timing belt, okay? just one thing to keep in mind I almost forgot um, when you guys are doing the timing belt and you guys you know did your six full turn as well since I don't have balance shafts you know that doesn't really matter but you guys want to make sure this is lined up in the proper spot okay and you have um, a decent amount of tension or a pretty good amount of tension on the on the belt for the balance shaft okay all right 